Just three videos in, and this thing is finally looking like a truck. Hello everyone and welcome! I'm back today with a little update on the CTC-01 RC truck chassis. This easy to 3D print 124 scale semi-truck platform keeps getting better and better with each iteration. And after the work I've been able to do these past couple of weeks, it's just about ready for an initial STL release, so all of you watching can do a similar build yourself. As always, if you'd like to catch up with the progress that's been made so far, feel free to check out the playlist below in the description to see the prior videos I've made, but today I'll be bringing you up to speed on what I've been working on recently. At this point, the chassis is pretty much finalized, at least for now. There will be various improvements and variations to come, but at this point, I'm more or less going to call it good enough. One of the final things I wanted to do was modify the front end parts so that the frame rails don't extend any further than they have to beyond the front wheels. My concern was that having too long of a chassis would require the front bumper to be placed too far forward from the wheels, not allowing the hood and the rest of the body to be lined up correctly. By making the distance from the front of the wheels to the front cross member as short as possible, this shouldn't be a concern. It'll be way easier to mount the front bumper further away from the cross member if needed than it would be to have to cut away the chassis so that the bumper can sit further back. The hinges for the hood will be glued to the front bumper, but I won't be doing any further assembly until I have everything painted. As you can see though, I can position that front bumper as far out as it needs to be. I'll probably just cut a few pieces of styrene to space out the front bumper if needed, then glue it into place. The hood will be attached to the bumper via hinges, with the backside of the hood just resting against the cowl. Maybe with a magnet or two in place, if the hood doesn't want to stay closed on its own, or if it's bouncing around while the truck is driving. There will be plenty of room for a fully detailed engine bay, so I want to make sure that the hood is functional and will flip open just like the real thing. With these new front end parts installed, that won't be a problem on this kit, or hopefully with any other ones. A relatively small detail, but one that I think will be pretty important to make this chassis compatible with as many different truck kits as possible. With the core chassis looking good, I wanted to design a few simple parts to allow the body and electronics to be easily mounted. The results are the parts that you see here. To mount the electronics, I created these pieces that can fit either in between the frame rails or just to the outside. They're deep enough to allow components such as the ESC, receiver, or battery to be placed underneath the cab. Fitting electronics into 124th and 125th scale plastic car model kits can be a bit difficult at times due to the size of the electronics relative to the vehicle. With this truck though, there will be plenty of room to hide everything, especially with the motor on axle design. Heck, you don't even necessarily need to be that particular with the components that you're using. As an example, I decided to use the transmitter and receiver from this FMS FJ40 that I featured in the last video. As you may recall, I upgraded both the transmitter and the receiver on that vehicle, so why not use the stock ready to run setup on this truck here? I don't need anything fancy, and the standard FlySky receiver fits this truck just fine. I placed it just below the sleeper area, cutting a hole in the bottom so it can fit over top. There's plenty of room for the ESC to sit in front of the receiver, and the battery can be placed in the sleeper. That top roof piece fits snugly in a place, so to change the battery, all I have to do is pop it off, and as you can see, there's plenty of room inside for a battery, sound module, light kit, or whatever else I might want to add. This truck can still have a fully detailed interior and engine bay. This is about as easy as 125th scale model to RC conversions gets, and goes to show that you can utilize parts that you already have sitting around, such as the old ready-to-run transmitter and receiver. We can build these trucks with great scale looks, including full interiors and engine bays, but we don't have to break the bank to do it. That's one of the goals with this project and this chassis design. As for the body mounts, like I've used many times on prior projects, I decided to use magnets. This will make the body easy to remove when needed. As you can see, I've got a couple of different designs here, one that sits on the outside of the frame rail and one that has the magnets placed more towards the center. You can see the setup that I have here, I'll have two magnets placed under the cab and two more under the sleeper. This body mount arrangement might not be ideal for a truck that doesn't have a sleeper in the back. I'll probably see if I can come up with a different way of mounting the body that would make more sense for a non-sleeper or a cab over style truck. For this GMC General though, mounting the body is very simple using these magnets. I've glued the lower magnets into place onto the mounts and then I stacked a few on top so the body sits at the correct height. Then for the sleeper, I actually just placed a couple of magnets on the inside and then positioned it where I wanted, then glued those magnets into place. A very easy process. 
I'll wait to glue the magnets that go underneath the interior tub once I have everything painted and assembled. That will have the cab and sleeper solidly attached to the chassis. From there I just need to align the hood and front bumper in a way so that when the hood's closed it lines up with the cab. That might end up being easier said than done, but I guess we'll see. A really nice setup for this truck, but depending on what model kit you end up using, you may have to be a bit creative with how you mount the body to the chassis, but of course that's to be expected with this niche of the hobby. I'll be using the fuel tanks, battery boxes, and steps that are included with the model kit to hide these body and electronics mounts. Some custom work may be required to get those items to fit onto the frame, but that's where you apply your skills as a model builder to get everything fitting and looking as accurate as possible. Overall, I'm really happy with how these mounts turned out, but I'm sure I'll be coming up with some more solutions in the future to fit different model kits. Along with the fun stuff, like designing the parts and building the truck, there's some more boring tasks that I've been working on as well. One of those is putting together a hardware list and diagrams. As I've mentioned before, I'm trying to design this chassis around common, easy to obtain hardware, not requiring a huge assortment of different sizes and lengths. For the most part, it's pretty basic M3, M2, and M1.6 hardware. You may even have some of the necessary hardware already if you do a lot of tinkering with RC vehicles and have a stash already. Unfortunately, a few of the sizes seem to be hard to find in smaller quantities from US sellers. At some point, we would like to put together some hardware kits that contain every single piece of hardware that you'll need to put one of these chassis together. For now though, you may have to wait for some pieces of hardware to arrive from overseas. Obviously, a comprehensive list of all the parts needed that cannot be 3D printed will be posted along with the STL files, and hopefully before too long, we can have a nice convenient and lower priced hardware kit that will get you everything you need shipped right here from the US. We'll probably put together some complete kits for those without 3D printers, but not before getting the chassis design more finalized. I don't want to sell any kits or chassis until we've built a number of them and have worked out any issues and made any necessary improvements. I haven't yet started on a trailer, but here's a look at the simple concept I have for a functional fifth wheel. Just a simple pin and magnet setup to hopefully keep the trailer in place. I thought it would be cool to try to design a simple mechanism for remotely locking and unlocking the fifth wheel. However, you'd also need some kind of way to drop the legs on the trailer. I mean, I guess you could just drop the legs manually, but if you're going to do that, you might as well just pop the trailer off the fifth wheel. I don't know, is it worth the R&D to have a remote functional fifth wheel lock? What do you think? It could be kind of cool, and there's certainly room on the chassis to fit a small servo to control a mechanism, but is it just adding needless complexity? I don't know. I've done quite a bit of driving with this truck, and despite not yet having a trailer, I've haphazardly towed around some weight just to see what it can do, and it's sure it'll have plenty of power to tow around the lightweight trailer plastic model kits that you can buy along with these trucks. As discussed prior, these N20 motors are sufficient, especially on 3S, but they do lack a bit of torque. When choosing a motor, I'd suggest going with the lower speed variants that will provide more torque if you plan to drive these trucks only at slower speeds, like moving trailers around a loading dock. Otherwise, these N20 motors do a good job and have a decent amount of modulation, but as discussed prior, implementing higher torque and higher speed motors is certainly on the wish list for future versions. I can't complain about the steering angle though, it's pretty maneuverable even with this long wheelbase. If you notice the servo twitching, I dropped this chassis and the steering servo has been kind of messed up, so pro tip don't drop your chassis on concrete, stuff might break. I designed these wheels around the tires that were included with the plastic model kit. Obviously this combination of wheel and tire fits perfectly, but I wanted to see if there were any other tires that can be purchased separately that will work as well. In case the tires that are included with your plastic model kit don't fit, or you want to custom build or 3D print a body instead of using one from a model kit. I bought this set of 125th scale tires that you see here from AMT, but these are a different design and a larger size. They also don't have a nice inner lip like the ones included with the model kit have, so a bit of a disappointment, but I can still design some wheels that should work well with these tires. I did notice that it seems AMT sells a different tire set that might have tires more similar to the ones included with this model kit. So I guess I'll order those and see what they look like. I'm not sure how many different tires found in these 125th scale truck kits will fit the wheels that I have designed currently, so just be aware of that when you do your project. 
For now though, I'll continue to see if there's a nice tire set that can be purchased separately that will fit the wheel design that I have currently. Otherwise, I'll need to design some wheels that will fit these tires that can be purchased in these sets. Obviously, more info to come once I learn a bit more about the different tires that are available. Like I said, I'm pretty satisfied with where this chassis is right now in terms of the overall design. While I certainly want to experiment more with the design and hopefully along the way make various improvements and additional variations, I think what I've got here is good enough for a public release. Call it a beta or a work in progress, but it's something I think has enough polish that I feel confident getting these into the hands of other hobbyists and seeing what you all think. The next video that you'll see in this series will be a detailed assembly tutorial coinciding with the release of the first batch of files. Expect additional parts and variations to be developed and released in the future. As well as getting the files and tutorials posted, I would really like to get this truck finished up and ready to display at this year's Beat the Creek on May 3rd through the 5th. Obviously, about all that's left at this point is to just get everything assembled, painted, and looking good. At this point, there's just about two weeks left until the event, so can it be done? Well, stay tuned and we'll find out. As I wrap up today's video, I have to once again give a huge thanks to all of our Patreon members. It's your support that makes these videos and 3D printable chassis possible. If you're interested in becoming a member, the link is below in the description. While the STL files for this particular truck chassis have not yet been posted, if you're interested in doing a car-based project, we've got some parts, chassis, and accessories available right now. But that's going to be all for today's video. As always, thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.